Milk, is it really healthy for your bones? Why are researchers and scientists speaking against it? Is the food industry hiding something from us? We're told that milk is good for us. Three glasses of milk each day gives you strong bones and even prevents osteoporosis. It's also heavily advertised as the answer to beauty and happiness. I felt like a little girl. The guys ignored me. But then for the next few years, I was eating right and drinking milk for beautiful hair and a super smile. And pretty soon, milk had made a difference. Hey, Jill, want to dance? I'm you two years from now, because you're drinking milk and working out. Well, I'm not changing so far. All that protein for muscle and calcium for bones. But I'm still a skinny bench warmer. Hey, if the sight of yourself at 18 doesn't convince you, Tom, listen to your senior year girlfriend. Hi, Tom. I'm waiting. Milk, it does a body good. But is one glass of milk a day, let alone three, really good for you? We're going to be taking a look at a very controversial subject today. This video isn't meant to tell you how to balance your diet. Honestly, eat whatever you want. The important thing here is to inform yourself before you let mainstream media make lifestyle decisions for you. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Before we buy into the idea, let's find out how and why cow's milk came to be. A question that comes to mind when we talk about milk is, why did the first cow milker decide to milk a cow? There's no documented account of this momentous event, but there are artifacts that provide very compelling theories. Archaeologists in Europe analyzed Neolithic pottery remains and discovered milk fat residues. Neolithic is a fancy word which here means something belonging to an era of time when humans transitioned from hunting and gathering to farming their own food. This suggests that humans have been milking cattle, sheep, and goats for 8,000 to 10,000 years. The fact that the earliest evidence of milking comes from the Neolithic era makes sense seeing as humans had just began farming at this time. However, that still doesn't explain why they drank the milk in the first place. No one knows why for sure. One theory could be that humans may have first tried drinking milk from cows out of desperation when food was scarce. So I'm hungry. If only I had food. Mm, you gotta try this stuff from the cows, Jerry. No, that's unnatural. Well, would you rather starve? All right, fine. Pass the cow juice. Yeah, I, I don't think we're gonna call it that. Also, perhaps early farmers saw the similarities between human and calf nursing and tried giving babies cow's milk when the mother was unable to produce milk herself. Mama, sustenance, now. Uh, we, we've been through this, Kyle. I'm all tapped out. Look, I'm, I'm gonna need you to be a team player here, Kyle. Uh, talk to Bernice. Moo. No, I hate cow mama. Maybe people tried human milk as adults, liked it, and turned to the cows for more. In summary, with one cow, we can produce more milk than 26 mothers. I'll take 12. Splendid! Make haste, Percival! <laughs> Things get weird when I think about this too much. Despite not knowing the origin story of milk, it's been viewed in a positive light for thousands of years, dating back to ancient mythologies. Norse mythology says that in the Black Void at the beginning of time, fire and ice collided to create a powerful giant named Ymir. And a cow. The great Ymir blessed the world with many children through his sweat. Perspiring out offspring is very hard work, but luckily Ymir had an unlimited supply of nourishing milk thanks to his best friend the cow. And Ymir and the cow lived happily ever after, until a god named Odin slew Ymir and used his body to make the earth. African mythology says that in the Black Void, at the beginning of time, there was a drop of milk. And then God came and created all the things. That's right. Rock beats scissors, milk beats God. Greek mythology says that our galaxy, the Milky Way, was in fact made from milk. The story goes like this. Greek god Zeus had a half-god child named Hercules with a mortal human woman. The breast milk of Zeus's wife, Hera, was believed to possess divine properties. So, to give Hercules the power of a real god, Zeus snuck the baby onto Hera to drink her milk while she was asleep. Hera woke up to an unfamiliar child and freaked out causing milk to spill into space and form the Milky Way. As you can see, milk plays a vital role in the creation of things in many ancient stories. So, why start putting down milk now? Researchers and scientists have found out that milk isn't as divine as we once thought. Cow's milk has been long associated with strong bones because of the high levels of calcium and vitamin D. But over the years, more and more people have been questioning the health benefits of milk. Well, Mr. Miller told me he never drinks milk. Look at him. Milk! Just 
just a flesh wound. A two-year-long study analyzing 167 men confirmed drinking milk fortified with vitamin D stopped or slowed down bone loss. However, a 22-year-long study found an increased risk in fractures in men who drank more milk during adolescence. And another study analyzing 70,000 women for 18 years found neither positive or negative relationship between drinking milk and bone health. In fact, there seems to be just as many studies finding positive relationships between milk and bone health as negative, and even more studies finding no conclusive results whatsoever. So, what's the truth? You can't handle the truth! The thing with studies is that there are many variables to consider. To better understand this concept, let's familiarize ourselves with the terms correlation and causation. Correlation means that two variables increase or decrease in similar ways, but there are variables that may influence the relationship. Causation means that one variable is the result of another, creating a direct link between the two. For example, tiredness causes me to be grouchy, and tiredness also causes me to drink coffee. But coffee does not cause me to be grouchy. Unless, of course, it's decaf, but you get the idea. A more concrete example is the idea that skim milk consumption is correlated to low fracture risks. Someone who drinks skim milk is probably health conscious and exercises and eats well. These are all variables that may influence lower fracture risk, meaning we can't say skim milk is the only variable and direct cause of lower fracture risk. And this is the reason why there are so many studies with conflicting findings. There could be any number of variables responsible for the observed results. So, why would the USDA recommend three servings of dairy a day for strong bones when there is no definitive evidence to support this? Money may be the culprit. In 2003, Dr. John McDougall exposed the dairy industry's marketing plan. The dairy industry is supporting a $11 billion milk business and a $16 billion a year cheese business. And they have dedicated $165.7 million this year, 2003, to promoting dairy products. He pointed to their statement, which reads, This ongoing program area aims to protect and enhance consumer confidence in dairy products and the dairy industry. A major component involves conducting and communicating the results of dairy nutrition research showing the healthfulness of dairy products, as well as issues in crisis management. Dr. McDougall explained the meaning behind this statement. They are going to pay with that $167 million to get research to show benefits of their products. That's what they're paying for, that's what they'll get. They'll do anything to get those results. The other thing that they're going to spend this money on is issues in crisis management. I am crisis management. This can be described as the funding effect or the funding bias. Humanities and social science professor Sheldon Krimsky defined the funding effect as the close correlation between the results of a study desired by a study's funder and the reported results of that study. In other words, a company can pay for research that supports their product and leave out information that doesn't support it. So even though there are plenty of studies finding positive and negative relationships between milk consumption and bone health, you're only going to hear one side of the story from the milk industry and USDA. Actually, in 1999, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine PCRM, sued the USDA and HHS for having inappropriate special interests. Dr. Neil Bernard, the president of PCRM, explained, We were looking at the Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee, which, which makes the recommendations as to what every American should eat. We found that there were 11 people on a committee, of whom six were industry funded especially the dairy industry, but also eggs and meat. So we filed a lawsuit against the USDA at that time. You cannot be letting industry dictate what people eat. We won that lawsuit quite quickly. Also, in the same 2003 Dairy Management Incorporated Marketing Plan, there is a statement about school marketing. It reads, as part of an effort to guide school-aged children to become lifelong consumers of dairy products, 2003 activities will target students, parents, educators, and school food service professionals. That's why you see chocolate milk, cheese sticks, parfaits, parfaits are delicious. No! and more in school cafeterias and vending machines. And in 2018, the USDA planned to purchase $50 million worth of milk to distribute to national assistance programs such as food banks and schools. Hundreds of medical professionals protested against this decision in front of the White House. 
There's definitely a conflict of interest when the USDA is a government organization that is meant to promote both agriculture and public health. If there is evidence against the health benefits of dairy, grains, or meat, the USDA will not be very willing to report it since it's bad for the products they're supposed to be promoting. What about that crisis management that Dr. McDougall was talking about? Here's an interesting case I found. Doctors have questioned the link between asthma and dairy consumption as more and more people were able to get rid of their asthma by going dairy free. There were even multiple studies that supported these concerns. The National Asthma Council Australia actually stands against these studies and says there is little scientific evidence to make the correlation. Instead, they state, the National Asthma Council Australia also does not routinely recommend avoiding dairy foods as a way to manage asthma. Unfortunately, most Australians are missing out on the health benefits that come from consuming milk, cheese, and yogurt as they don't include enough dairy foods in their diet. Why would a council that works to help asthma patients undermine these studies? So I'm going to click on this website and see who sponsors them. And Dairy Australia is one of six sponsors, and the other five are drug companies. One makes money if you buy the cheese, and the others make money if you stay sick. The USDA and milk industry aren't the only ones spreading misinformation. Organizations on the other side of the milk debate are also misleading the public to fit an agenda. PETA, a well-known animal rights activism organization, claims animal proteins produce acid when they're broken down. In order to neutralize and flush out the acids, our bodies have to use the calcium that milk contains, as well as some of our own stores. So every glass of milk we drink leaches calcium from our bones. However, PETA does not source any scientific evidence to back this up. This claim was based off of a rumor floating around mainstream media. In fact, the only scientific evidence on this matter states the opposite. A 2011 study revealed that the modern diet and dairy product consumption does not make the body acidic. Of course, PETA is a non-profit organization, so they aren't gaining money from this, but they want people to stop consuming animal products and are spreading misinformation to fit this agenda. There may be no concrete studies that show direct causation between milk consumption and good or bad bone health, but there are some things about milk we know for sure. We as human beings really aren't designed to use milk, other than our mother's milk, when, when we're young. The purpose of cow's milk is to turn a 65-pound calf into a 400-pound cow. You know, I tell my patient, go look in the mirror. Do you have big ears? Do you have a tail? Are you a baby calf? If you're not, don't be eating baby calf growth fluid. You don't need it. And it's, it's really absurd to argue that any mammal needs to drink the milk of another species. That's, that's just absurd on its face. Every mammal produces milk to nourish their babies, but after the baby has grown and is weaned, the mother stops producing milk. Humans are the only mammals who consume milk in adulthood, let alone from another species. Some people are crazy enough to put it in coffee. It's unnatural, and our bodies tell us this. Milk has a naturally occurring sugar called lactose, which is a disaccharide sugar, meaning that it is made of two simple sugars. Humans can only absorb simple sugars, so our body produces an enzyme called lactase, which breaks lactose into its two simple sugars, glucose and galactose. However, this enzyme is usually only present during infancy because we need to properly digest our mother's breast milk. Breast milk helps babies grow and strengthen their immune system. Once they've grown and developed a strong immune system, the lactase enzyme disappears because its job is done, meaning no more breast milk to break down. This explains why the majority of the population, approximately 65%, become lactose intolerant in their adulthood and even teenage years. The other percentage develop a genetic mutation which allows the lactase enzyme to stay active in adulthood, helping the body digest dairy foods. This condition is known as lactase persistence. Some studies suggest that lactase persistence is more common in countries that have a history of consuming dairy products, such as northern European countries. However, it's a correlation, not a direct causation, so we can't say for sure. Still, it raises the question of whether animal milk is essential for the human diet. I don't have the answers, but I'll raise another interesting point.
and it doesn't supply any nutrient that we can't get elsewhere in our diet. If you're drinking milk for bone health, you're looking for calcium and vitamin D. Calcium is a mineral that helps with bone health, and vitamin D helps your body absorb the calcium. Some calcium-rich foods are tofu, broccoli, and leafy green vegetables, which are also great sources of vitamin K, another great nutrient for bone health. There are also milk alternatives that supply calcium, such as almond, soy, hemp, and rice milk. Just make sure you look for the ones that are fortified with vitamin D. Your body naturally makes its own vitamin D when exposed to sunlight. Doctors recommend you get 30 to 60 minutes of sunshine a day. Fun fact, Dr. Michael Holick advises to get sunshine during 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. because if your shadow is longer than your body height, you can't make any vitamin D. You can also find vitamin D in fatty fish like salmon, tuna, and cod liver oil. You can also take calcium and vitamin D supplements if you require more nutrients than the average person. Of course, you should consult your local physician to help determine what your daily needs are. Is milk bad for you? Well, if our research has shown us anything today, it's certainly not a necessary part of your diet. Because at the end of the day, whether it's calcium rich or fortified with vitamin D, Milk is a food for babies. Yeah, babies. That goes for all animals. Moo! Yeah. I'm not telling you to stop drinking milk. You're not my dad! But simply asking you to think about who is telling you what to eat and what their motives are for doing so. I don't care about the children! I just care about their parents' money! And for being's sake, don't believe something just because someone behind a screen says so. Alright, now time to upload. Let's see here. Um, no, no, not. Phew! I just want to thank Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Dashlane is a secure password manager that can store and autofill passwords on all of your devices for people just like me who have trouble remembering things. You can easily generate unique and secure passwords through Dashlane. You can even share passwords with friends and family without actually revealing the password. And has other neat features like sending a breach alert when a website that you have an account with is compromised, and a VPN with country selection for safe and private browsing. With Dashlane, you're getting a password manager, VPN, and dark web monitoring for less than what just one of those services usually cost. More privacy online and more cash set aside for coffee? That's a win-win right there. Try Dashlane Premium for free at www.dashlane.com brew to get a 30-day trial. If you like it and want to subscribe at the end of your trial, you can use the coupon code BREW during your checkout to get 10% off. 